God of creation, there at the start, before the beginning of time. With no point of reference, you spoke to the dark and fleshed out the wonder of life. And as you speak, a hundred billion galaxies are born. In the vapor of your breath, the planets form. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've made. Every burning star, a signal fire of grace. The creation sings your praises, so will I. God of your promise. Don't speak in vain, no syllable empty or void. For once you have spoken, the nature and science follow the sound of your voice. And as you speak, a hundred billion creatures catch your breath. Evolving in pursuit of what you said If it all reveals your nature, so will I I can see your heart in everything you say Every painted sky, a canvas of your grace If creation still obeys you, so will I So will I. Stars are made to worship, so will I. If the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the oceans roll your greatness, so will I. For if everything resists to lift you high, so will I. If the wind goes where you send it, so will I. If the rocks cry out in silence, so will I. If the sun of all our praises still fall shy, and we'll sing again a hundred billion times. God of salvation, you chase down my heart. All of my failure and pride On a hill you created The light of the world Abandoned in darkness to die And as you speak A hundred billion failures disappear where you lost your life so I could find it here. If you left the grave behind you, so will I. I can see your heart in everything you've done. Every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart a billion different ways Every precious one, a child you 
died to say If you gave your life to love then so will I Like you would again a hundred billion times But what measure could amount to your desire You're the one who never leaves the one behind Hello and a warm welcome to you as you join us at Christchurch Warminster for our Sunday worship. This morning we're continuing our sermon series, Parable Stories Jesus Told, and we'll be looking at the parables of the hidden treasure and the priceless pearl. As some of you will already be aware, we are also, in addition to our online services, able to meet in church now and are having a weekly service of Holy Communion at 10 a.m. The service is pretty much identical to this service with the addition of being able to receive communion. And all of you are really welcome to join us any Sunday for communion. All that you need to do is contact the parish office. The details are on our website so that you can book in as we need to limit numbers and also for track and trace we have to keep a good record of everyone that attends but you'd be so welcome to join us and um, we've put many things in place so that it's safe for everyone to do so but before we begin our worship this morning let us still ourselves and pray god of our days and years we set this time apart for you. Form us into the likeness of Christ so that our lives may glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Wake up everyone that can hear. Come and worship. Even if you're tired and worn out, come and worship. Lay down the heavy things you are carrying. Come and worship. Listen to what Jesus wants to tell you. Come and worship. Discover how Jesus wants to use you. Come and worship. For Jesus loves each of us uniquely. And he will give us everything we need to follow him. Let us pray together. O oh God, Jesus taught that where our treasure is, there will our hearts be also. In this time of worship, we come bringing our treasures, all that we have and all that we are. We come seeking your treasure, treasure that does not fade, decay or disappoint. Share with us the treasure of heaven, that we may boldly share it with others. Amen. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in all in one? The King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing 
love That you would take my place That you would bear my cross You'd lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me Who brings our chaos back into order Who makes the orphan a son and daughter The King of glory, the King above all kings Who rules the nations with truth and justice Shines like the sun in all of its brilliance The King of glory, the King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love that you would take my place That you would bear my cross You'd lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Worthy is the Lamb who was slain And worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain And worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain And worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain And worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy, 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 yeah This is amazing grace This is unfailing love that you would take my place That you would bear my cross You'd lay down your life That I would be set free Oh, Jesus, I sing for All that you've done for me Let us pray. I open our intercessions this morning for the set prayer for today, the 10th Sunday in Trinity. Let your merciful ears, Lord God, be open to the prayers of your people, and so that we may obtain your petitions, teach us to ask for those things that please you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Give us grace, Almighty Father, to address you with our hearts as well as with our lips. You are everywhere, and from you no secrets can be hidden. Teach us to fix our thoughts on you, remotely and in love, so that our prayers are not in vain, but are acceptable to you now and always. Amen. We pray for our scientists that you will inspire them in their urgent request to produce a successful vaccine for the coronavirus. Help us to be sensible and careful in the meantime and trust you for our well-being in these difficult times. We pray this morning for peace in our world, in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, and other places where the fighting is seemingly endless. 
for the desperate plight of the boat people escaping from the horrors of war, trying to reach our shores, for those suffering persecution because of their unfailing love for you, give them courage and strength they need in body, mind and soul to keep them going, often in extreme circumstances. Let us pray especially for the Lebanon following the massive explosion in Beirut, the thousand injured, the believed, destruction of homes, the rise of the people against the corrupt regime and the subsequent collapse of government. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We, we lift to you to the Lord those known to us who are sick or suffering or are mourning the death of a loved one. Please take a moment to mention them in the silence of your own heart. God, whose son Jesus understood people's fear and pain before he spoke of them. We pray for those mentioned in our hearts, for those in hospital or suffering at home. Surround the frightened with your tenderness. Surround the anxious with your love. Give strength to those in pain. Hold the weak in your strong arms and give hope and patience to those who are recovering. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We make many prayer requests to our loving God for healing, and when healed we too often forget to give him thanks and praise that he deserves. So take a few moments now to say thank you to a gracious and listening God for all his good works. Amen. We are a broken, divided family of lonely individuals, each alone and truly not a family. Communication with you and each other sometimes seems impossible. You alone are our hope, our God of salvation. Your love breaks down walls and isolates and separates us from you. Your love heals and restores and makes us whole again. Restore us, O God of our salvation. Reconcile us to yourself, that we might again be part of your family and live. Amen. Open our eyes, that we may continue to see the deepest needs of people. Move our hands, that they might feed the hungry. Touch our hearts, that they may bring warmth to the despairing. Teach us generosity that welcomes strangers. Let us share our possessions and clothe and give care that strengthens the sick. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You, Lord Jesus, knew great power to heal and transform, to proclaim the reign of God. We pray for the church, tempted like its head, for Archbishop Justin, for our bishops Nicholas, Karen and Andrew, our clergy here, Lorraine, Alan, Mags and Caroline, our LLMs and LPAs, and all have input into the services, especially during these difficult times. Holy Spirit, enable us to respond to temptation with the strength of your word within so that we may hold firm to our calling and take your better way to faithfulness. We pray for, especially for our own church fellowship here, that we might be together soon. And in the meantime, remember in our prayers, the senior members, the families, the children and the vulnerable who feel unable to come. O oh God, whose beauty is beyond our imagining and whose power we cannot comprehend, show us your glory as far as we can understand it. Shield us from knowing more than we can bear, until that day when we may look upon you without any fear. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And drawing our prayers and praises in together, we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Uh, this reading is from Matthew 13, verses 44 to 46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then, in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. This is the word of the Lord. Before we turn our attention to today's parables of the hidden treasure and the priceless pearl, let us pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that as we think on these two parables this day, that we would be open to the truths that you want to reveal to us. That we would receive everything that you want us to receive through your word this day. Both as individuals and as your church. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. The parables we're looking at today are similar to last week's parables of the mustard seed and the yeast and the parables the week before about the wheat and the tares. That's because today's parable alongside those are kingdom parables. The kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are two interchangeable terms used by Jesus throughout the Gospels. They're at the heart of his teaching and ministry. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. He said to the disciples, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. He told them, unless you become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. He also said to them, the kingdom of heaven is in your midst or within you. When Jesus was speaking of the kingdom, he was speaking about a kingdom where he rules, a kingdom unlike worldly kingdoms that are driven by power and control. And we're part of this alternative kingdom, the kingdom of God exists in the hearts and lives of everyone who worships Jesus as Lord. As Jan reminded us a few weeks ago, we are children, we are citizens of the kingdom when we obey the will of the Father. We, the church, God's people, are part of God's kingdom. Yet it's also a kingdom that we long for as we long for it to come fully. We pray for it as Jesus taught us when we pray, your kingdom come. Through today's parables of the treasure and the pearl, we can understand more about the value of God's kingdom. These two parables go together. They're about two men who both find something of great, great value, so valuable that both of them give everything they have to obtain it. Firstly, we hear about a man who stumbles across buried treasure 
in a field. I don't know about you, but I find it hard to connect with that concept. It makes me think of pirate treasure and stories that I've read with the children. But for those listening to Jesus, they would have really been able to connect with the turn of events that the parable speaks of. Because it wasn't unusual during Jesus's day for people to bury their treasure. There were no banks and people would literally hide their valuables in the ground to keep them safe. At times of war, people would have to leave their valuables behind. And when the war was over, they would go back to retrieve it. Sometimes they would never return. It must have been quite frequent that treasure was discovered because there was even a law in place that said that when buried treasure was discovered, that it automatically belonged to the um, person who owned the land. This man who discovers this buried treasure, who stumbles across it, may well have been a labourer ploughing the field for the landowner when he came across it. But this treasure discovered is so valuable that the man, filled with joy at his find, sells all that he had to buy that field so that he could rightfully, rightfully obtain that treasure. The second parable, the second man's story, is very similar, although it is different. He doesn't stumble across his treasure, that pearl of great price. He knows what he's doing. He's a merchant of pearls. He's a pearl expert, so to speak. He knows what he's looking for. It's his livelihood to seek out and to find pearls. But similar to the first man, he also has at this moment of realisation when he realises that he's discovered something so precious and so valuable that he sells everything that he has to obtain it. Through these parables, Jesus is illustrating to us the value of his kingdom. Living in God's kingdom, receiving the gift of knowing Jesus' love personally, the gift of receiving forgiveness and restoration with our Heavenly Father. Forgiveness for every failure and every fault. The gift of becoming a child of God and receiving the gift of eternal life. The gift of living a life under Jesus' rule of love and the freedom that comes in Christ is absolutely priceless. Some of us stumble across it, like the man possibly ploughing his field stumbled across that treasure. We're not looking for Jesus when we find him. But God reveals himself to us. For me, it was when I was 16 years of age, I was just in the right place at the right time. I was at a youth meeting. I wasn't there um, positioning myself to hear about God. I was there because my friends went and we, I just went along. I just went with the flow. But right there and right then I heard about Jesus and I discovered him for myself. I wasn't looking, but I received a gift that night, um, a gift of knowing Jesus' love for me. And it changed my life. Others discover God differently, that they're actively seeking God out. Like that merchant they're positioning themselves, they're going to church, they're reading the Bible. 
they're reading books, they're having conversations with people whom they know know God. They're on a mission to discover out to discover more and find out about God. These parables not only reveal to us the priceless treasure that is living a life in relationship with God. These parables also reveal to us that this gift, this treasure is available to everyone and that we find it in different ways. I want to ask you today the question, have you found the treasure? Or do you need to seek it out? If you have received the gift of the kingdom, do you know its value? Have you let go of everything in order to obtain it? As the man who discovered the treasure sold everything he had, as did the man who discovered the priceless pearl. There's also another angle to these parables, another kingdom truth that we can gain from them, a precious truth. And as I've spent time pondering and preparing to share with you today, the Holy Spirit reminded me that we, as God's children, are treasure and pearls to him. We're priceless to God. You are priceless to God. Our great God, the King, values you so highly that he gave his life so that you could be with him. He gave up everything for you and for me, even his very self. God is above all, yet we are of greatest value to him. How can we respond to this great and precious love? Have you made the decision to follow him? To live in his kingdom with him as Lord of your life? If you have done that, are you aware of the treasure that you have? Are you aware of the pricelessness of the gift that you've received in Christ Jesus? And are you also aware that he calls you not just to receive and benefit from his priceless precious love but to share it with those around you? and enable them to discover it too. Amen. Rejected and alone like a rose 
trampled on the ground. He took the fall and he thought of me above Almighty God, how awesome it is that you have created us, that you love us and that we are your treasure. Thank you so much that you have sent us Jesus to lead us into relationship with you. Thank you that Jesus is treasure for us. Send your Holy Spirit so that we can discern the individual message that you have for each one of us in these parables and in your word. Inspire us and set our hearts on fire for love of you. Enable us to recognise what the true treasure is that we should be seeking. Help us to line up our priorities with yours. And help us to work together as church, to be the treasure of the church, blessing those who have less than we have, who do not know the gospel and who are unable to help themselves. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you 
we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will build my life upon your love. trust in you alone and I will not be shaken I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in you There is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around. Please do join us after this service on Zoom for fellowship if you are able to. All that you need to do is click on the link on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel. But before we go about the rest of our day, let's take a moment of quiet and pray. Thank you, Jesus, for your great love for us a love which led you to the cross in our place. Let not the things of this world hide that treasure from us. Open our eyes to see the value of a relationship with you. Help us to empty our hands of the things to which we are holding on to, so that we may be filled with your Holy Spirit. Amen. Go into the world knowing that God is with you. Go into the world with the peace of Christ upon you. Go into the world with the blessing of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God the Father 
Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.